This is a review for the Roborock S7 and S7 Plus. The S7 Plus comes with an auto empty dock and compatible dustbin, while the S7 does not. Otherwise, the two robots are identical. The S7's airflow was measured at 12 CFM. Its suction was measured at 0.07 kPa. In our carpet stress test, the S7 picked up all debris types very well. Like the Roborock S4, S5, and S6, the S7 has an average size direct cleaning path with a brush roll compartment that is right around 6.5 inches wide. And like those other Roborocks, it too has an oversized side brush on one side that helps pull debris into its direct cleaning path. What's notably different about the S7 compared to earlier iterations is its brush roll and the compartment that houses it. First, the brush roll is different. It's completely redesigned to be entirely made of a rubber-like material with no soft bristles. The fins on the new brush roll are also more plentiful and don't extend nearly as far away from the brush roll itself. Second, the compartment that houses the brush roll is different. It too is completely redesigned to fit more snugly around the new brush roll. In any case, the redesign didn't really have much of an impact at all in our carpet stress test. The S7 performed just about as well as previous models picking up surface level debris in this test, though it too relies on repeated movement over the same areas in the same cleaning cycle to clean up well in this test over time. The S7's brush roll redesign did make a big difference in our carpet deep clean test, but not in a good way. The S7 picked up only 3 grams of debris after 3 passes over an area of carpet embedded with 30 grams of fine debris in this test. Now we always perform this test running the vacuum on default power and on maximum power, though we usually only list the default power result. We do so for two reasons. First, running these robot vacuums on maximum power reduces battery life and increases noise output dramatically in many cases. So the vast majority of users will almost always want to run their robot vacuums on default power. Showing test results for default power is therefore much more indicative of the average real-world use case. Second, we didn't see much of a difference in performance in this test between default power and maximum power for most of the robot vacuums we tested. For example, all of the Eufy random robot vacuums we tested got the same result in this test on default and on maximum power. All of the other Roborock LiDAR robot vacuums we tested we're only able to pick up one more gram in this test on maximum power compared to default power. Not only is the difference insignificant, but it makes it clear that it's really not worth running these vacuums on maximum power for increased deep clean performance. This was not the case for the S7. Running it on maximum power versus default power made a big difference in this test. Doing so doubles its deep clean performance. And so the S7 on maximum power can equal the default deep clean performance of the S4, S5, and S6, though it requires a higher suction setting with reduced battery life and increased noise output to do so. Moving on to our hard floor stress test, here the S7 once again picked up all debris types very well. Again, we didn't see any significant difference in performance in this test for the S7 with its redesigned brush roll compared to earlier models. Though here again, just like earlier models, it relies on repeat movement to clean up properly in this test over time. The S7 also performed very well cleaning edges. Like the S6 Max-V, it gets sufficiently close to the edge to clean it properly when moving close and parallel to it. The S7's brush roll compartment redesign allows for a tighter seal to hard surfaces. This was demonstrated in our robot vacuum crevice test, in which it pulled up more debris on default power and especially on maximum power than any earlier version Roborock lighter robot vacuum we tested. In our human hair pickup test, the redesign surprisingly made very little difference. Like earlier models, the S7 picked up all the hair, but most of that hair wasn't pulled into its dustbin. And just like those earlier models, 70 to 90% of the hair it picked up tangled around its brush roll and had to be cleaned off manually. The only area where the redesign did make a difference was hair removal. Because of its bristleless design, it was easier to remove hair from the S7's new brush roll. In our pet hair pickup test, the S7 once again performed much the same as earlier models. It picked up and collected all of the shorter pet hair used for this test in its dustbin without issue. Compared to earlier models, the S7 has a redesigned mopping mechanism and an additional mopping pathing option in the Roborock Companion app. 
All S5 and S6 models can mop, and they all mop much the same way, by dragging a wet cloth across a surface to clean it. The S7 does the same thing, but adds vibration. There's a metal bar that inserts into the mopping attachment and vibrates the attachment as it's dragged across the floor. The new mopping attachment can also lift up off the ground slightly so that the robot can cross rugs and the like with the mop attached. Both of these features are nice to have, but don't really make a big difference according to our testing. In our mopping test, the S7 really didn't clean the test surface any better or any quicker than any of the earlier model Roborocks that don't feature vibrational mopping. The lift feature is slightly more helpful. However, it only lifts the mop 5 millimeters off the ground. That means that it really only works with very low pile rugs and carpet. And so for most users, using no mop zones will still be the way to go to ensure the robot doesn't have any issues with rugs or carpet while mopping. And that feature is also available with earlier models. Finally, we have the new mopping pathing option, deep cleaning. On this setting, pathing density essentially doubles so that the center part of the mopping attachment that vibrates the most covers every single part of the room. We've already shown how this vibration didn't really make much of a difference in our testing, but let's assume it does make some difference in certain applications. In such a scenario, this pathing option allows it to make that difference over each and every section of a room. Moving on to a more general discussion of the robot's pathing with no mop attached, we first tested it in an empty room and found it to exhibit excellent coverage and redundancy across the whole room. In this trial, we can see how it first moves in vertical rows and then moves in horizontal rows to complete a single cleaning cycle. Earlier models would either only move in vertical or only move in horizontal rows each cleaning cycle. We much prefer the crisscross cleaning pattern of the S7. We also tested the robot's coverage with the auto empty dock and it got good complete coverage in this trial as well. Next, we tested the robot's cleaning efficiency and coverage in a cluttered room an environment with a lot of obstacles and a lot of tight spaces. And here the S7, using LiDAR navigation, does very well. It navigates around all of the obstacles in the room with an extremely high degree of precision and efficiency and has no trouble making its way through tight spaces. Other important specifications and test results we considered for this review are summarized here. Note especially that this is a full-fledged mapping robot that has the ability to map multiple floors of your home. And using the Roborock Companion app, you can label different parts of the generated map, set the robot to clean specific parts of the map, or set it to stay out of certain parts of the map. In the same chart, also note the S7's runtime, bin volume, and noise output, and how those specifications and test results compare to the average for all of the robot vacuums we've tested so far. Lastly, note the robot's diameter and height. These dimensions make the S7 one of the larger robot vacuums we've tested. Moving on to what we like and dislike about this vacuum, first let's talk about what we like. The S7 cleans up surface level debris on both carpet and hard floors very effectively. It also cleans edges well. It gets a tight seal to hard surfaces with excellent performance in our crevice test. We also like that it's easy to remove hair from its brush roll, and while we don't think the mopping upgrades on this model make that much of a difference, this robot still mops really well. It also navigates very precisely and efficiently. Lastly, we also really like the self-empty functionality of the S7 Plus. Moving on to what we dislike about this vacuum, the biggest negative for the S7 is its poor carpet deep cleaning performance on default power. Its performance is much better on maximum power, but at the cost of reduced battery life and much greater noise output. Another negative is its dustbin, which while redesigned compared to earlier models, is still quite small and even more compact, while the robot itself remains large, which may limit its access to certain parts of your home. In terms of general recommendations, the S7 is definitely one of the best robot vacuums we've tested so far. It does have one big flaw, its carpet deep cleaning performance. But you can work around it by putting it on a higher suction setting. And if you primarily need it to clean hard floors, it becomes much less of a concern. Otherwise, outside of carpet deep cleaning performance, this is a very good robot vacuum. The S7 Plus is in fact the best auto empty robot vacuum we've tested so far. See the description of this video for links to buy the S7 Plus and the S7, as well as a link to the latest updated list of all of the robot vacuums we recommend and thank you for watching.